All right. Brent Fikowski here, the professor. Professor Project update for the first week of programming here of the new year. Now, obviously these updates haven't been coming as frequently. I've been making sure I've been getting that programming done and getting the uh, answers to all your questions for those that are subscribed to the Professor Project. That has been the priority and uh, I've been making sure that's been getting done. However, these videos have not been coming at the same frequency. Um, the last quite a while really since uh, since the games and especially since Rogue I think of the last it's just been about two months now since the Rogue Invitational and uh, I've been home for about 11 days <laughs> so a lot of travel in there which was good and uh, with that you know wasn't able to make these videos on a recurring basis but also um, my own training suffered as a result I haven't been training as intensely which is part of the plan for sure but I'm excited to get back into a routine um, as always, we have the, the full Fikowski, which is like two workouts a day. And then there is the essentials. So I'm going to be following more so the essentials uh, for the next little while, which I'm excited about. Um, a little less training volume, but still wanted to obviously have the the two sessions a day for those people that are that are competitors that want to take this seriously, that want to, you know, progress to that next level. I think, you know, putting in that work um you know, just getting more reps in, getting more quality in is always going to be good. And in this sport, there's just so much going on. There's just so many movements to master and you got to put in those hours. But for someone like myself that isn't interested in competing, but still wants to stay in great shape, uh, 60 to 90 minutes a day, the essential track is a great way to go. And so I wanted to briefly touch on going to be doing these weekly recaps. I've got some other exciting things that, uh, you know, I'm cooking up that I want to do here and kind of announce by January, February. But right now, this is week three of a training block. Um, solid cycle, like simple stuff. There's your Metcons in there. There's all that stuff, um, strength. But really the, what I wanted to kind of emphasize, I've been thinking about this right now, is sort of this like off-season mentality. And obviously, you know, middle of winter and New Year's Eve time of year, likely not any competitions coming up in the immediate future for most people. That could be, you know, not be the case. But um after a Rogue Invitational, my coach and I, David, had a few calls with some male athletes that were competitors of mine for years, and they kind of wanted to pick my brain uh, now that we were no longer competitors on what's been working well for me um, the last little while. And, you know, we had some good insights. And one thing I noticed, you know, looking through what their training looked like is that, you know, the good athletes that have longevity in this sport do an, an off-season style training. And that looks very different for all of them. But knowing that there are seasons to your training is important. So if you're just hammering hard workouts all the time, um, you know, CrossFit workouts are high intensity. They're typically like anaerobic stuff repeatedly. Uh, you know, power cleans, burpees, chest of ours, go, go, go. Getting your heart rate really high. Um, going away from that for a portion of the year is going to have a really good benefit. Yeah, it's going to hurt when you come back to doing that stuff, but you're going to be better for it. And so really the, the two main pieces you're going to be looking for in those off season kind of windows is going to be long duration aerobic work and strength work. And what those aerobic pieces are and what that strength work looks like is going to be different for everyone. But those are kind of the two big building blocks to a lot of the movements and a lot of the stuff that's tested in this sport. And then it combines together and becomes workouts. And so, you know, whether that's zone two work or even, you know, one of the conditioning pieces I really liked in here was uh, with the Turkish get-ups, the inverted burpees and the machines. And so kind of like a weird workout, but those Turkish get-ups and those inverted burpees kind of bring down the intensity a bit. Whereas if those were, you know, dumbbell snatches and normal burpees, all of a sudden that's like, you know, tough workout and your heart rate's getting really high. But including some Turkish get-ups in between machine stuff, like kind of brings down that intensity. And then with the strength work, that's obviously person dependent, right? So, you know, historically we've focused mostly on uh, the powerlifting stuff and with the, you know, really making sure the powerlifting focus and the squats and the deads and the strict press are improving. And then Olympic lifting skill work on top of that. Um, for some people, it's just gonna be Olympic lifting, Olympic lifting, Olympic lifting, and really hammering home that technique and that power and that speed. Um, and then for some people it's, you know, strict gymnastics work, right? Strict pull-ups, bent over rows, ring rows, strict press, strict handstand push-ups, push-ups, dips, strict dips, all that sort of stuff. So keep that in mind, you know, and that really what that means and that you're going to see that in the program, like there's going to be those things, but there's also going to be the wads and the Metcons because, uh, you know, people want to have a good time. And I was still doing those in the off season as well, but kind of like when you're, when you're mentally preparing for the session, 
especially given you know your time frame of your year depending on how much time you have I guess what I'm saying is like mentally and also time wise make sure you're prioritizing those off season focuses this is a really good time of year for most people it is more of an off season and so if you can prioritize those things mentally and make sure when you're doing zone two it's like hey I'm just going to listen to some easy music I'm going to take long slow breaths and I'm going to see how high I can get these watts or how fast I can get this pace while staying in that um, heart rate zone and so for example I know one time I was doing some zone two work and I was kind of having a conversation with someone in the gym like not a full conversation but a little bit and obviously that's not like the most ideal breathing tactic and so the actual pace I was holding was fast, but not that fast. Um, but I was staying in the heart rate zone. A week later, same session, same same duration. And this time I was like, all right, I'm gonna listen to music. I'm gonna focus, it was on the bike. And so I was like, I'm gonna focus on relaxing my shoulders, relaxing my neck, relaxing my arms as much as possible. Long, deep, slow breaths, full inhales, full exhales, sometimes just closing my eyes. And obviously my pace was quite a bit faster while holding the same average heart rate. And so at the end of the day, like that's what you're trying to do with everything is be efficient and even in that conditioning work. So if you can put that same level of attention as opposed to like, ah, zone two work and you just kind of roll through it mindlessly. Think about, can I put the same level of intention into that work that I do into prepping for some really hard Metcon? Um, and the same thing goes for the accessory work this time of year, you know, whether it's bent over rows or strict press or, you know, one arm rows or whatever that is, um, hamstring curls. If you can put that same level of focus into those accessory pieces, into that strength work, into some five by five back squat, you're going to see, um, you're going to reap the rewards from that. And I think that's probably what makes the biggest difference between people that make great progress or make mediocre progress. It's not so much what's on the page, it's how you do what's on the page and, and how much you focus on that and really give that intent focus. Um, and especially, you know, even for myself, if I'm only in the gym for an hour, an hour and a half now training, uh, the more focus you can put into that, the more you're gonna get out of it, right? Um, as opposed to, you know, trying to multitask during that time, then you're probably gonna get half, half standard or half uh, adequate results at everything. That's it for now. Really excited for this next month, Professor Project. Appreciate you all. Have any questions, as always, hit me up. And uh, let's get after it this new year.